call it potato bug man is what they call it. Stripy bug. I started out playing uh, about four years old. I was playing this uh, called a potato bug mandolin. I had to sit up in the bed and cross my legs to hold on to it. And my mother's trying to teach me a G and C chords on it, you know. And that's the way I started. After that, I kind of went to the guitar and played a little bit. That's as I going up to five or six in, you know, getting on up a little bit. There's soda pop and the dancing spree. My influence was, uh, I remember Hank Williams Sr. I, when I was a kid, we had back in the old country place where I grew up, we'd all gather around this little radio, you know, all the family. But Hank Williams, you know, I loved his stuff the way he played, you know. My dad bought me a fiddle that paid five dollars for it, and it had only had two strings on it. So anyway, I started learning playing a little on the two strings, you know. They wanted me to enter this fiddler's contest. I said, Daddy, I said, I need two more strings. And uh, in the state of Alabama, I won the first prize. Kenny, born and raised in Alabama, uh, near Muscle Shoals, uh, which is itself an important center of American recording. Kenny is a, a guitarist and also a very fine um, fiddle player. Uh, whose stylistic range goes all the way from rock and roll and rockabilly through honky tonk. In 1955, there's a little lady there in Florence called Maggie Sue Wimberly. She had got a song, that somebody wrote this song, How Long Will It Take You to Make Up Your Mind? How long will it take you to uh, that She got a deal to go to Sun Records for Sam Phillips, which is my second cousin. And I just got out of high school. Hank Williams was booked at the community center in Sheffield, Alabama. We fronted his show that night. He was in, downstairs there at the community center in, in the dressing room. And I went in and I got to meet Hank Williams. He said, I heard you up there playing, son. So I heard you. He said, you just stick with it. You're doing good. My cousin had started a little rockabilly type band there in Florence. They wanted to me to join in with him, you know. And it's called the Go-Go Boys. So that's, that's playing a little little hillbilly, hillbilly rock. So let your hand out, baby, do the crazy shake. So we, I went with them, we played around Florence and played some talent shows. And then we started to change our name from the Go-Go Boys to the Five Jets. I had a booking agent, we started playing the other nice supper clubs in, in South. Then we uh, moved to Monroe, played the place called the Rendezvous, and we stayed there and we, about two years, and that's where I met Jerry. Jerry Lee is, of course, one of the major figures of early rock and roll. He was an early rock and roll star. His flamboyant, highly energetic stage presence, the way he played piano, not just expertly with his fingers, but also with his feet and his elbows and his fists. He was a fantastic singer. Great Balls of Fire and a whole lot of shaking going on were the hits that really put him on the map. We got chicken in the bar and made him kind of a household name in the late 1950s. But anyway, that's where I started with Jerry. He said, you know, that, that I was the only rock and roll fiddle player he'd ever met. <laughs> I want to tell you a story. First show together was in uh, Texas, and it was, um, see, 1967. There's one thing that uh, I, I noticed I, I didn't realize, but at the end of the show, uh, you know, usually Jerry kicks the stool back. And, and I wasn't aware of that. He was doing a whole lot of shaking, and so he kicked the stool back, and it, it got me right between the knees here. I said, I won't, I won't make that mistake again. So now, you, if you watch the end of the show, you'll see that I moved back. You know, they labeled him as rock and roll, you know. But see, he come out, his first record was Crazy Arms, you know, which is a country song. And You Win Again is a country song. It's on the backside of uh, Great Balls of Fire. This is hard of mine. He sort of made the transition over into country music in the late 1960s, but the bulk of his career was really spent singing and playing and recording country music. And holding the year no more. The Country Music Hall of Fame and the industry finally got around to recognizing that just before he passed away. I played fiddle on all of his country stuff. All the good is gone. She even woke me up to say goodbye. Chantilly Lace. Another place, another time. Another time. I think he was doing an interview here. He said, oh, well, I don't know about that too much. A killer. 
I mean, he just came out with it. After that, he just started calling everybody killer. They called him the killer after that. Uh, this is the killer speaking. But Kenny was definitely known for being kind of Jerry Lee Lewis's right-hand man. A lot of the sound that Jerry got out of his band was thanks to Kenny's presence and Kenny's influence as a kind of leader of that group. God bless the show, brother. Hi. Came from gospel and the blues. Black people was coming out with blues and rock and billy, and like Elvis did, it put a beat to a little bit of a country song, and then they and called it rockabilly. Jerry Lee Lewis was from Louisiana, where there was a long history of black piano players, and he absorbed a lot of those influences, brought them into his version of rock and roll. <laughs> It was good playing with Chuck and Little Richard, you know. It worked out good we, that they had rock and roll artists together that had different style rock and roll, you know. I had a style of fiddle that was kind of blues country that he loved. And on his records, if you hear some of his records, he'd play your fiddle, Mr. Lovelace. Said, play it, Kenny. Get it now. That made me feel good. I mean, to give me credit, you know. He needed someone who understood how best to plug that sound into the overall sound of, of Jerry Lee's band without taking the spotlight away from Jerry Lee. Kenny was a master of that, the unsung hero. When you get on the stage, you know what you're gonna do, and if you do it good, it's gonna feel good. <laughs> While he was associated for decades with Jerry Lee Lewis, and that was kind of his primary gig, uh, he worked with a lot of other artists, both on stage and in the, the studio. This is his first appearance on the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville. The Grand Ole Opry was one of them, that 1973. <laughs> Here is Jerry Lee Lewis and his fine band. But the Ryman, the Ryman Auditorium, after this, this was back eight years ago. Come on, that was a great show. I, I really loved that show with Jerry. Well, I came to Nashville after I was with Jerry, you know. We moved over in 1980, been here ever since. I got a good friend of mine, Marty Stewart. The last time I played with him, it was his 30 years of being with the Grand Ole Opry and wanted me to uh, play fiddle with him on the song that I recorded with him on Rough Around the Edges. During the time I was with Jerry, I, I cut a couple uh, albums. And have no place to go. 2019, we did our last show in Greenville, South Carolina and packed the house. And he did really well, did a great show. Got older and he still made it happen. You know, he still kicked the stool back. I still moved back. <laughs> he might not be a household name the way uh, his boss, Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, became. Kenny is, for those in the know, kind of a legendary figure who's really done so much for so many different kinds of music. I'm really, really proud to say that me and Jerry had a wonderful relationship. He was like a brother to me. He's my good friend, Jerry Lee. I just think I was really honored to be his band leader for 54 years, be with a legend like Jerry, you know. I feel like I had a good career. There were a lot of good times at that old Sun Studio. And just for you, I'd like to do some rockin' country song.